What I want is to back up my Synology NAS without huge cloud storage costs. In a perfect world, I'd take a second Synology, drop it off at a friend's house, and it would just work. No messing with their network, setting up dynamic DNS services or static IP addresses or port forwarding. Just plug it in, turn it on, and it works. And this is actually possible with a service called Zero Tier. Using Zero Tier, the two devices will appear to be on the same local network no matter where they are in the world. So the first step is to create a Zero Tier account. Uh, Zero Tier is free for up to 50 devices, which is plenty for what we're doing. I've already created an account. And so the first step then is to create a network. Click Create a Network and it creates one for you. We can click on it to get some more details about the network. And honestly, all the defaults are perfectly fine. Nothing we need to mess with here. So the network's been created. We have a network ID. Let's uh, go and set it up. So Zero Tier offers packages for Synologies, and there's a variety of different Synology models out there. So you'll want to look up the architecture of your Synology, uh, and I'll link down below a page that you just look up your model number, and it'll tell you which architecture you want. So I have a DS1618+, Plus, which is Denverton, and I also have a DS416 Play, which is a Brasswell. And I've downloaded both of those already from this Zero Tier download page. So over here, I have my primary NAS, and you can see my primary NAS is configured to not use DHCP. It has a static IP address. But my remote NAS, which will be moving off-site, does use DHCP. And this is so when I drop it off uh, at the secondary site, no configuration has to be done. It'll automatically pull an IP address, it'll join the zero tier network automatically, and uh, nothing will have to be adjusted in terms of firewalls or static IPs at wherever I'm keeping this. So we're going to go to Package Center. We're going to do a manual install. I'm going to browse to the files I downloaded. Again, my primary uses Denverton, so I'll choose that for upload. Just click Yes to continue, run after installation, and apply. So now we're installing Zero Tier on the primary NAS. And here we can see Zero Tier is installed. I can open it up. We are online and we want to join our network. So I'm going to go grab that network ID, copy it, paste it into this and click join. And you can see right off the bat, it says access denied. That's because we've created a private network and the device has to be approved first. We'll reload the page. and it says one device has joined this network. So here we can see our new device. So I'm gonna give it a short name so I can keep them apart. I'll call it primary NAS and I will click authorize. And as you can see here, we've now status is okay. We've joined, we have an address on our zero tier network. So we can close that for now. We're gonna do the same thing on our remote NAS. I'll go to package center, manual install. Browse for the file. Again, this is a different architecture, so I'll choose that one. Click yes, apply. It's installed, we'll open zero tier. We'll put in that same network ID and click join. Requesting configuration, we're gonna get access denied again. We're gonna have to approve this one. And here we can see the second device has popped right up. So I'll name it Remote NAS. I will authorize it. And it's on the network. And we can see its IP address as well. Now that we've got the networking configured, we want to search for Snapshot in the Package Manager. And we're going to install Snapshot Replication. And Snapshot Replication is installed. I've already done the same on the secondary site. You can see Snapshot Replication is installed. So we have that installed on both systems. So on the primary NAS, let's open Snapshot Replication. And as you can see, we don't have any scheduled replication right now. So let's click on Replication and create a replication task. The source and destination are going to be different because they're two different devices. The server name IP address. Now this is important. We want to use the IP address that was given through zero tier. 
not through the DHCP address on my local network right now. So t today I have them side by side on the same network so I can copy all that data very quickly. Then I'll power it down, move it to the new site, power it back up, and it will still have the same IP address when it comes up. So we'll copy that in. We'll give it the username and password for that NAS, which I have saved. We're gonna click Advanced Settings and then select Source Server. And here we wanna change the default IP to the zero tier IP so that the remote NAS is able to communicate back. Now, you could turn on using encrypted connection here, but zero tier is already encrypted, so the tunnel and data is going to be passing uh, through is already encrypted, so we don't need to spin any CPU cycles encrypting and decrypting the data. We'll click Next. It says on what volume on the secondary NAS do I want to store the data on? I only have one volume, so that's what we're going to choose. And what do I want to replicate? And for me, what I'm interested in is my video files. These are all my... Um, uh, in progress and finished video uh, that I want to save to my secondary NAS. So I'll, I'll select that share and click next. We're going to send the initial copy over the network. Again, because they are local, that will be pretty easy. If your devices are already far apart, you can put it on like a USB hard drive or something and ship that to see the data so you're not copying it all over the internet. But since I'm on the network, we'll do that. We'll click next. And here's your replication schedule. How often do you want to send the data? So I'm going to do uh, dailies. Uh, so every day, uh, right in the middle of the night is fine. And we'll click Next. And here, you, this is snapshot based. So the question is, how many snapshots do I want to uh, hang on to? Um, and you can, you can set this however you like. I like to keep dailies for a week keep a couple weeklies behind, keep one monthly and one yearly. That way if something gets deleted and you don't notice it and six months goes by, you can go back and find that data. Click Next. And Next. We're going to confirm all our settings. Click Apply. Now the initial replication is underway and it's going to take some time because there's quite a lot of data. And once this initial copy is done, I will power off the secondary NAS, move it to its new home, its new location, plug in Ethernet, hit the power button, it's going to come online, automatically join that zero tier network, and replication will continue daily uh, per the schedule I've set up. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Thanks.